Hello. In this video, I will introduce the Ullekhanam UI, which is soon to be replicated. The Vedavapi Ullekhanam UI, which is soon to be replicated thanks to a new UI being built by Kimshuka people. And along the way, I will demonstrate uh, the API which uh, the UI, whether it is this or the next one, may use, and how uh, to make it independent of the backend API. So, uh, first of all, if you go to this page, Vedavapi Sessual Economy UI, you can you will get to this uh, readme.md file, and there you click on this link. I open it in a new window. And first of all, you get this list of books. If you want to inspect uh, what API calls were made, just go to the JavaScript console of Chrome and click on network and refresh the page. You see lift list books .html was called and then down here you see the API call. It is calling textract slash v1 slash books. It is of course deprecated. Uh, and uh, you, you can see the response right here. You will see two book portion objects. Alright. Uh, now you will see what happens when we go and look into any given particular book. For example, English. Okay, you get to this particular page uh, and you see this what is supposed to have been an arrow mark here and an arrow mark here which helps which makes you navigate the pages inside this book. Uh, so if you click on this you get a new page and a new page and so on. So here we are and let us see what uh, APIs were used. Let's just refresh this page. See, it called uh, first of all ubook.html, which is a static HTML page, and a bunch of JavaScripts which we are not interested in. The real API call happens right here. Great. See, that is the response. And but let's see the header first. Uh, it's calling text track slash v1 slash books slash the book book name, uh, the book ID. Sorry. And with that, you get this response, which is uh, which is a tree, a tree, as I said in an earlier video, which is represented by JSON object node objects, a hierarchy of JSON object nodes containing book portion objects, is what you get. And uh, let's see. Now, suppose I want to log in. What I do is I click on this button, but I open it in new window. I do that now and get here. Okay, so right now I am just returning this message from the back end. It's not uh, well formatted or anything, but hopefully uh, the new UI can put it in a better way and lead the browser to go to this next uh, this page automatically that's pending work but now we are logged in that's good because now what we can do is we can click on a uh, segment here what does this do it makes an api call it makes an api call this api call is what it makes it makes this api call it says get me all the image annotations for this page of course this is deprecated your uh, api and you will have new api right here in the old economy thing uh, so uh, just to see the api which it did use let's see um, i'll open text track slash talks in a new window and let's see if I marked it uh, deprecated. Okay, see here the strike through. It tells us that 
these things are being have been deprecated. Uh, instead, we just use uh, suitable API provided in the Ulekhanam space. So, what we have is a bunch of image annotations. And uh, what did this API in fact return? It indeed returned JSON object nodes, a tree of uh, an array of tree of JSON object nodes containing image annotation objects. And of course, you see every rectangle here. You see it's x1, uh, y1, h, height and width right here. Now suppose I want to add, I want to change. I want uh, let's say that I want to change some rectangle. I just dra drag it like this and then I hit on C. See here? Now it ha it should have saved. Let's look at the console. Yes, annotation saved successfully. And what was the call used? It was right this. Or was it this? Yeah, it seems to have been this. Let's see. So there was a post call made on this API. Ulekhanam slash v1 slash entities. And what was the data sent? The request payload was a JSON object node with these contents. Uh, you see the content is one single image annotation with new dimensions. All right. Now, what are this? Uh, where are these new dimensions specified? Uh, it would be inside the targets, uh, the first array, and the uh, okay. These are the new dimensions. And you see, uh, the ID is also specified here within the post request a payload. But you don't see any ID mentioned here. It's always read from here. If anything needs to be updated, it is read from here and the appropriate object is up updated. All right. Then uh, let us see what this one was. Oh, this one was some options call, which we are not interested in we'll just ignore this call and this is what this is the post call which saved the new dimensions of this image annotation object now suppose i want to s uh, i'll just what i'll do is i'll extend this further oh sorry that created the new thing I'll, uh, I'll just cancel that and i'll extend this one here and i will again click on save first of all and as usual you see the post request here along with the newer dimensions yeah see uh, the height i believe has changed as well as the width should have changed all right anyway now uh, this is an image annotation object which you are which you are able to see here image annotation object now I want to attach a text annotation to this image annotation. What I will do, I will just type January and press enter. Okay. So I don't know if it got saved. So let me try again. Ah, see here. Now it is, it's been accepted on the front end. When I click on save, dump. what happened? Was there an error? okay a post operation has failed but let's see what was this one here that was an options and this was a post in the console there was a 417 exception um, and uh, okay anyway the request payload in this case was a text annotation object a JSON object node whose content field is an image annotation which m I may have slightly altered or something and uh, whose children include a text annotation object 
and the text annotation object contains this new text January so this is what I tried to save but it failed I'll have to figure out why later all right uh, we last paused the video when we saw uh, that there is some sort of uh, error when I tried to save the annotation the new text annotation which I had created um, it turns out that there was uh, excessively strict validation which was trying which I should not have in the code which I think I have fixed but I want to take this opportunity to illustrate what to do when such an error happens so you notice that uh, from the JavaScript console that there is uh, there is a REST API call which you made here which has failed and you can see it in the console as well right here uh, and it returns the 4017 error code and if you look at the API documentation you will see that 417 stands for JSON schema validation error furthermore if you go and look at the uh, API call you just made you look at the see here expectation failed that's what uh, that's the response you got and you see the request payload here uh, you see what uh, 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 the response is. Uh, the response includes something called an exception dump, which uh, you can, which is a single string, but which looks uglier than it should. What you can do is you can put it in a text file like this and replace uh, slash slash n with a new line character, and what you get is something prettier and you will see that we are trying to validate the schema of something and the particular uh, schema which I can see here is the schema for text annotation object and we see that this text annotation object uh, schema is failing to validate on this particular instance why is it failing? because we see that uh, targets is required whereas this thing contains no target so uh, the backend is saying I'm not going to save this to the database. You fix your data and give it to me first. But is it really an error uh, in part of the front end? Because the way the API is designed, we should be okay with uh, uh, not setting the targets as long as we are passing the uh, sort of uh, parent object in the content field right so there are two ways of looking at this one is if you are passing this text annotation object in the content uh, field of the json object node then it should definitely validate perfectly which means that it should have a targets field set as well which is why there is no problem in trying to write for example this if uh, children were totally empty okay uh, however there is another uh, re another way of uh, writing this text annotation node it could be that I don't know the underscore ID of the image annotation object right then what what will happen is I cannot set the targets field of the text annotation object uh, as you can see in the text file I just showed you in the snapshot I, sh I just showed you, showed you see there is no tar I can't set the targets if I did not know in this case of course I do know the uh, object ID of the image annotation but it is possible that I created the new image annotation for example by clicking here uh, I created a new image annotation like this but uh, uh, it is possible that uh, this image annotation uh, is uh, I just created I have not saved it but I want to add a text annotation to it before saving so in that case there is no object ready for the image annotation uh, so I can't uh, just set the uh, text annotation in the content field so in such cases what I would do which I'm also doing here even though I don't need to is I just set the content field to be the newly created image annotation and then in the children uh, field I set uh, 
JSON object node which wraps the text annotation, which is what is being done here. Which is why I have uh, the uh, at the higher level an image annotation, and at the child level I have uh, JSON object node wra wrapping a text annotation object. Oh, of course, this object is incomplete. As you saw that the I just saw the schema demands that targets be set. The target field be set. I use don't see any target field here, and that target field should point to this particular uh, uh, whatever ID. Uh, it is of the higher level object. In this case, I know, but I have not set it in this UI. It need not be the case. So uh, that is why uh, it was. Uh, that is why the API uh, is designed the way it is. You should uh, not. You should be able to pass uh, a text annotation without setting at this in this level without setting the underscore id uh, in uh, without setting the targets field. Okay. Now uh, that we have this, what do we do now? Why uh, why was it failing? Because there was a error in the backend where I was uh, uh, a recently introduced error where I was being too strict in my checks hopefully i have fixed it now so i will try to save uh, whatever my new text annotation again i will click on save and see what i get okay oh it seems to have failed again oh it uh, i know i know i know because it is because i did not restart the server uh, let me just pause the video and restart the Alright, uh, now I restarted the server. Since I restarted the server, of course the session will have become invalid and I will have to log in again. I will log in again as usual. Uh, OAuth login. Okay. Login successful. And now I will just refresh this page to start over. I click on segments. It what it does is if uh, the rectangles don't exist it creates uh, these rectangles in the back end and pushes it to the front end but if the rectangles already exist it doesn't create them anew you see that uh, uh, change which I did last time uh, the rectangle extension thing uh, the rectangle has a new size as expected uh, so the saving of the rectangle had worked but the saving of the text annotation if you remember did not work now let's see if it works now I created a new text annotation in the front end. I'll try to save it now. Yay! Oh no. Internal server error. Uh, Alright, let me pause the video. Ah, Alright, it turned out that I was... Uh, may I had made a copy paste error when I just uh, submitted, committed the thing. I have just corrected it and I have veri verified it by saving this uh, text annotation which you see here. So I will just demonstrate that uh, you can indeed save the text annotation properly now. So I will just say January and then press enter and then click on save. Okay, now here the post call has succeeded. See here, uh, the payload is same as before. I have a content class pointing to the image annotation. Uh, and the content field pointing uh, being uh, image annotation and the chi children node being a new text annotation without a targets field set. So the backend will set the targets field up appropriately, automatically. So there is no problem. So uh, post, I have demonstrated that it works right now. Uh, now let us see how do we delete an annotation. I will just uh, click on something and press delete. So it's gone. So both the image annotation should be gone and the associated text annotation should be gone. Uh, let us see if we can save this. Okay, it seems to have succeeded again. And this of course is accomplished using a delete call. You see this, a delete call. Now uh, this delete call what we are doing is we are passing again a JSON object node and we are passing first of all uh, two things 
one is the image annotation which corresponded to the rectangle around 20 and comma and the other was the text annotation which corresponded with uh, the content where the letters to zero com and comma and uh, you see from the response that 200 okay which means if you look at the sorry if you look at the api what does 200 mean it means update success so no problem everything has succeeded and here i terminate this video hope this was useful